really cool. That skyline. That is one area in the world that I have not been. Going up to those northern colder regions. Been all over the place. But that is on my list of things to do. I want to go to Alaska. I want to go to parts of Canada or Russia. I mean, Russia is probably a little sketchy. I'm sure, there's great folks there, but it's kind of one of those places as an American tourist, you probably go over there and disappear and no one would bat an eyelash. But at the same time, if you could look up in the sky and see something like that, like that's badass. The coldest place I've ever been was Korea, actually. Off the coast of Korea, uh, one of my early deployments, I think it was my second deployment, old USS Carl Vinson out there. And they kind of used us as like a campaign tool or something. Like North Korea said, you will not come within X amount of distance of this country. And the United States said, we have a carrier out there near South Korea and we're gonna port and 5,000 people are gonna get off that ship. They're gonna party, go eat, drink, meet nice young females, I'm sure some of them. You know, we're gonna do all that in your backyard and you're not gonna do anything about it. So at the time, North Korea is like, there will be repercussions if you pull in this port. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm all about getting off the ship, but why the hell do I want to go somewhere where the next country over is ready to, like, drop a nuke on us just for showing up? So we went. And they actually gave us the most liberty I've ever had in a port. It was like five, six days. Minimal watch standing. And they wanted every single American person to be out there in Korea having a great time. And then the local media is taking pictures of all the Americans in the bars, restaurants, all this stuff going on. And they're like... By the way, we just pulled a carrier in your backyard. Everybody had a great time. And you didn't do anything about it. It, it was like the ultimate chess move. Or, or some, some would say the ultimate flex on an entire country. And if you're in North Korea, I'm sure you're not watching this. But I'm sorry for how that must have looked. Uh, you'll probably never have the internet at this rate where you can even see twitch but i'm just saying i'm not cool with like the suppression of nations you know like having people's rights and liberties to even play an online game or whatever you know like you can't even do that and there you are in another country right next door and they got every liberty you know like that's just a crazy thought to me um but anyways, I was talking about the coldness. It was ice damn cold. Like, this carrier had ice hanging off the front in the middle of the ocean. And I remember my boss at the time, big old burly dude. Like, you're not going to mess with this guy. I'm not going to say his name just in case he doesn't want to be put out there like that. But this dude would tell you to do something and there was not a question about am I gonna go do it it was like I'm gonna do whatever this dude says like this this guy will my ass he said go up there and watch this aircraft watch this F-18 and it was like zero degrees with wind chills of I don't know what going on out there and I'm like hell no I ain't going up there well, we did, because he picked up uh, one of those chains, and he was like, I'm going to wring y'all neck if you don't get up there and watch this bird. So we go up there and watch it, and you got people with gloves on, 
and their their hands are starting to freeze through the gloves ice is forming on our bodies it's snowing and we're watching an aircraft with little scrubbies like what the f oh, excuse me yeah like what the hell and we did the fastest job known to man everybody was like we're getting out of there as soon as possible and he comes up to take a look at it <laughs> and he's like this sh this jet is still dirty <laughs> and i never seen more people like more angry and upset in a circumstance like that cold was enough to make you angry you had people ready to be in a fist fight like bro i was up there all night doing flight ops and now I'm watching this aircraft and now it's dirty after we just finished so yeah that was a uh, that was quite an experience um, just never know you never know what you're gonna get yourself into so we got this area pretty documented there's some stuff over here I'm not going to be able to hit that looks like water you know unless they froze all of this area right here if they froze all that that could be kind of interesting I'm going to keep pushing south I don't care if I run out of gas with this particular Jeep right here. I'll call it back if I need to. I'm just gonna push as far south as I can go and try to peg the rest of this map. Ooh, whoa. That could have been a flip. But yeah, been a lot of places. So, South Korea, like I said. Uh, been to Malaysia. I've been to Brazil. Been to Peru. Been to Hong Kong. Uh, let me see what else. Uh, I was in Israel for a couple of weeks. I've been to all over Africa. East, West, South, like. Just all up and down that, you know. Um, there's actually some really beautiful parts of Africa that you would never expect to see. Like, I'm talking like tropical beachfront that looks like it belongs in the best catalogs in the world. But the, there's some war-torn areas where you would never have tourism if they don't figure out how to suppress the type of terrorism and just militias you know like wild militias patrolling these areas but there was some pristine water like crystal blue greenish water that's just white sand beach and looking at it from a distance you're like this place would be filled with people any day of the week and the sad part about that area of Africa is that there's so much oppression, there's so much violence and uncertainty that any thought of having a tourism industry in some of these beautiful areas would just make it a target. And that's a sad truth, but there's plenty of our warfighting brothers and sisters out there doing what they can to uh, collaborate with other world leaders, other armies, other U.S. partners to hopefully quell some of that violence. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that but yeah some other places um, I was in Australia for a couple of days badass place and what's funny about Australia is they think our accent is just as rewarding as we think they they are they, they're they like oh stop and have a beer you know with their Australian accent and then we say something, oh, thanks, I appreciate it. And they're like, hey, sussy, appreciate it. And they get, like, all fired up, you know, like, 
it's just funny. I mean, uh, I think it was one of my favorite places. Like the weather, if you think of Southern California, I mean, you hear of Australia and you're like, oh, it's blazing hot, desert. But they have some coastal areas that are like year round beautiful. And I would not hesitate to go back for for my own exploration not even be like you know part of a navy thing but just go back um, beautiful place uh, been over to the Middle East some dicey areas uh, I probably can't talk too much about those but um, there's some beauty over there as well and it's not like you think like a lot of times you think of the Middle East the same way as you would think of parts of Africa or Australia like desert hot but there's some really surprisingly beautiful areas and like mountainous regions and you know snowy areas like stuff you're not really even thinking would be out there um, yeah so the world travels have taken me to six of the the continents if I could get to Antarctica and I hope I have my geography right but you know like North Pole South Pole stuff that would complete in essence the world tour and I have this pair of shoes that's been to every continent but those polar regions I will take that pair of shoes put it on just set foot over there and then frame it and hang it up <laughs> you know um, but it's just one of the cool aspects of the Navy in general I can't say I've loved every minute of it because honestly I haven't it's been very hard it's challenging for your family for kids for you know having a, a family like life dynamic um, but I can't say the positive side just meeting people it's the people like there's there's guys that I met throughout my career I would call them brothers in a heartbeat like we might not see each other for two three years we might not even talk on you know online but then you're in the area go to the bar get a drink and it's like you didn't even miss a beat you know that that's the kind of friendships you don't find very often in life and one one takeaway from the Navy that I can be grateful for is definitely the friendships and the travel like I mentioned already but it also come at a cost a big cost like right now I have all kinds of messed up discs in my neck my back uh, I've got arthritis I got I had to have surgery I had to do like a rehab right now um, I used to be very active, like lifting weights, running, doing all kinds of outdoorsy kind of stuff. And ever since my injuries, I have not been able to do anything. So that's why I'm streaming. You know, screw it. I'm going to stream. I'm going to meet people. I'm going to, like this, I'm driving outside right now. I couldn't do this in real life if I wanted to my, with the way my neck is I already have to wear like a soft harness when I go in the car and like any vibration sends my my disc into like this like spasm but a video game like this allows me to feel like I'm doing something I'm not doing anything but it's still enjoyable though Um, I said in some of my previous streams like that was my hope for the channel is make this like a military friendly lounge and obviously anybody is welcome worldwide I don't care who stops in but I just wanted to designate it outright you know get off work you want to play some video games have a couple beers I'm down and I'm gonna keep doing this every day until I get healthy if I don't ultimately get my mobility back or anything like that, I hope to have built a network by then of gamers with the same like-minded, you know, wanting to jam out, do something fun. Um, 
a lot of my military friends are actually gone and it really sucks when you're gone and you have no internet no Wi-Fi um, I've done three carrier deployments and all three of them there's like internet hours the lower rank you were the less time you got so you got people like fighting over a computer and we're, we're like talking about thousands of people here fighting over a computer fighting over a phone trying to call your family trying to email your wife and kids and like that's hard um, I was on some desert deployments with some like more of the SOCOM side and like things with their side of the house is much easier like you're in a smaller crew and they occasionally get Wi-Fi hotspots and it's only like six guys using a hotspot like you can you could stream off Twitch on that but that's the exception not the norm so the vast majority of my friends you know what it's like to leave in like a January for example and all these new games movies like life is happening without you America the engine keeps on rolling and you come home and you're like when did this come out what is this movie like oh this game everybody's jamming on this game let me check it out and the user base of the game is already dead because you've been gone so long you get back and there's like no players you know like that's the kind of lifestyle that they have and I have a huge respect for it I'm not gonna be deploying anytime soon probably never again but for those of you who are out there on the grind on the flight deck at the fobs wherever you're stationed at and you're giving up your civil liberties you're giving up your what you love and enjoy I respect you I have the utmost respect for you and appreciation for you I know what it's like and I just hope that at some point global Wi-Fi or communications or some kind of way becomes available where you don't have to to live like that just to serve your country or just to do what you got to do um, there's always concerns of privacy and you know leak people leaking location of ships or troop movements or whatever else and I get that part but when you're on liberty and you're supposed to be in a place where you can be enjoying yourself and you got like 400 people getting off the ship at a cafe with like three kilobytes of connection that's that's hard man you know like that sucks so bad and I think the military as a whole can do better with providing the troops internet access and enabling them to have more like frequent contact with the people they care about when the mission is not in jeopardy like when you're not in a classified location or you're not in an area where you know it would be difficult to like you know hide what the ships are doing or whatever's going on um, I get that part but when it's liberty time you're off work you're not in a classified area like you're supposed to be out having a good time Give those homies some internet, dog. That's all I'm saying. Give them some internet. Maybe even put a couple of Xbox consoles out there or PlayStation or whatever. And let them game out to do something. But I'm off my soapbox with that.